Parallel cinema is a film movement in Indian cinema that originated in the state of West Bengal in the 1950s as an alternative to the mainstream commercial Indian cinema, represented especially by popular Hindi cinema, known today as Bollywood. Inspired by Italian neorealism, parallel cinema began just before the French New Wave and Japanese New Wave, and was a precursor to the Indian New Wave of the 1960s. The movement was initially led by Bengali cinema and produced internationally acclaimed filmmakers such as Satyajit Ray, Rinal Sen, Ritwik Ghatak, Tapan Sinha and others. It later gained prominence in other film industries of India and Bangladesh. It is known for its serious content, realism and naturalism, symbolic elements with a keen eye on the socio-political climate of the times, and for the rejection of inserted dance and song routines that are typical of mainstream Indian films. History Origins Realism in Indian cinema dates back to the 1920s and 1930s. One of the earliest examples was Babu Rao Painter's 1925 silent film classic Savkari Pash Indian Shylock, about a poor peasant portrayed by V. Shantaram, who loses his land to a greedy moneylender and is forced to migrate to the city to become a mill worker. Acclaimed as a realistic breakthrough, its shot of a howling dog near a hut, has become a milestone in the march of Indian cinema." The 1937 Shantaram film Dunia Na Main the Unaccepted also critiqued the treatment of women in Indian society. Early years. The parallel cinema movement began to take shape from the late 1940s to the 1965, by pioneers such as Satyajit Ray, Ritwik Ghatak, Bimal Roy, Rinal Sen, Tapan Sinha, Khwaja Ahmad Abbas, Buddhadeb Dasgupta, Chetan Anand, Guru Dutt and V. Shantaram. This period is considered part of the «golden age» of Indian cinema. This cinema borrowed heavily from the Indian literature of the times, hence became an important study of the contemporary Indian society, and is now used by scholars and historians alike to map the changing demographics and socio-economic as well as political temperament of the Indian populace. Right from its inception, Indian cinema has had people who wanted to and did use the medium for more than entertainment. They used it to highlight prevalent issues and sometimes to throw open new issues for the public. Early examples of Indian cinema's social realist movement include Darty K. Lal 1946, a film about the Bengal famine of 1943 directed and written by Khwaja Ahmad Abbas, and Nisha Nagar 1946, a film directed by Chetan Anand and written by Khwaja Ahmad Abbas that won the grand prize at the first Cannes Film Festival. Since then, Indian independent films were frequently in competition for the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival throughout the 1950s and early 1960s, with some of them winning major prizes at the festival. During the 1950s and the 1960s, intellectual filmmakers and story writers became frustrated with musical films. To counter this, they created a genre of films which depicted reality from an artful perspective. Most films made during this period were funded by state governments to promote an authentic art genre from the Indian film fraternity. The most famous Indian, neo-realist, was the Bengali film director Satyajit Ray, followed by Shyam Benegal, Rinal Sen, Adore Gopalakrishnan, G. Aravindan and Gurish Kasaravalli. Ray's most famous films were Pather Panchali 1955, Aparahito 1956 and The World of Apu 1959, which formed the Apu trilogy. Produced on a shoestring budget of 150,000 rupees $3,000, the three films won major prizes at the Cannes, Berlin and Venice film festivals, and are today frequently listed among the greatest films of all time. Certain art films have also garnered commercial success, in an industry known for its surrealism or fantastical movies, and successfully combined features of both art and commercial cinema. An early example of this was Bimal Roy's Du Big A Zaman 1953, which was both a commercial and critical success. The film won the International Prize at the 1954 Cannes Film Festival and paved the way for the Indian New Wave. Harishikesh Mukherjee, one of Hindi cinema's most successful filmmakers, was named the pioneer of middle cinema, and was renowned for making films that reflected the changing middle-class ethos. 
According to Encyclopædia Britannica, Mukherjee carved a middle path between the extravagance of mainstream cinema and the stark realism of art cinema. Renowned filmmaker Basu Chatterjee also built his plots on middle class lives and directed films like Pia Ka Gar, Rajnaganda, and Ek Ruka Wa Phila. Another filmmaker to integrate art and commercial cinema was Guru Dutt, whose film Piazza featured in Time magazine's All Time 100 Best Movies list. The most recent example of an impeccable art film becoming commercially successful is Harpreet Sandhu's Canadian Punjabi film work Weather Wife. It marks the beginning of cinema in Punjabi film industry. In the 1960s, the Indian government began financing independent art films based on Indian themes. Many of the directors were graduates of the Film and Television Institute of India FTII, in Pune. The Bengali film director Ritwik Ghatak was a professor at the institute and a well-known director. Unlike Ray, however, Ghatak did not gain international fame during his lifetime. For example, Ghatak's Nagarik was perhaps the earliest example of a Bengali art film, preceding Ray's Pather Panchali by three years, but was not released until after his death in 1977. His first commercial release Ajantrik was also one of the earliest films to portray an inanimate object, in this case an automobile, as a character in the story, many years before the Herbie films. The protagonist of Ajantrik, Bimal, can also be seen as an influence on the cynical cab driver Narasingh played by Somitra Chatterjee in Satyajit Ray's Abhijan .The cinema of Karnataka saw its first ray of hope of surrealism in N. Lakshminarayan's directorial debut Nandi Featuring mainstream actors like Rajkumar, Kalpana and Harini, the film was both a critical and commercial success. Produced by Vidaraj, it set a landmark by being the first ever Kannada film to screen at an international film festival. The movement gained significant momentum in the 1970s and 1980s resulting in numerous national awards and international recognition to Kannada cinema. Growth <laughs> <laughs> During the 1970s and the 1980s, parallel cinema entered into the limelight of Hindi cinema to a much wider extent. This was led by such directors as Gulzar, Shyam Benegal, Mani Kal, Rajinda Singh Bedi, Kantalal Rathod and Saeed Akhtar Mirza, and later on directors like Govind Nihalani, becoming the main directors of this period's Indian art cinema. Mani Kal's first several films Yuski Roti 1971, Ashad Ka Ek Din 1972, Davida 1974, and were critically appreciated and held to high esteem in the international spotlight. Benegal's directorial debut, Anchor Seating, 1974, was a major critical success, and was followed by numerous works that created another field in the movement. Kumar Shahani, a student of Ritwik Ghatak, released his first feature Maya Darpan 1972, which became a landmark film of Indian art cinema. These filmmakers tried to promote realism in their own different styles, though many of them often accepted certain conventions of popular cinema. Parallel cinema of this time gave careers to a whole new breed of young actors, including Shabana Azmi, Smita Patil, Amol Palkar, Om Puri, Nisiruddin Shah, Kulbushan Karbanda, Pankaj Kapoor, Deepti Naval, Farooq Sheikh, and even actors from commercial cinema like Hema Malini, Rocky, Rekha ventured into art cinema. Adore Gopalakrishnan extended the Indian new wave to Malayalam cinema with his maiden feature film Swayamvaram in 1972. Long after the golden age of Indian cinema, Malayalam cinema experienced its own golden age in the 1980s and early 1990s. Some of the most acclaimed Indian filmmakers at the time were from the Malayalam industry, including Adore Gopalakrishnan, K. P. Kumaran, G. Aravindan, John Abraham, Padmarajan, Barathan, T. V. Chandran and Shah G. N. Karun. Gopalakrishnan, who is often considered to be Satyajit Ray's spiritual heir, directed some of his most acclaimed films during this period, including Elipothium which won the Sutherland Trophy at the London Film Festival, as well as Matilakal which won major prizes at the Venice Film Festival. Shah G. N. Karun's debut film Paravi won the Camera d'Or at the 1989 Cannes Film Festival, while his second film Swaham was in competition for the Palme d'Or at the 1994 Cannes Film Festival. 
His third film Vanaprastham was also selected to Cannes Film Festival, making him the only Indian filmmaker who could take consecutively three films to Cannes. K. Balachander, C. V. Sridhar, J. Mahendran, Balu Mahendra, P. Bharathiraja, Mani Ratnam, Kamal Hassan, Bala, Selvaragavan, Miskin, Vetramaran, and Ram have done the same for Tamil cinema. During the domination of commercial cinema in Telugu, Patabarami Reddy, K. N. T. Sastri, B. Narsingh Rao, and Akineni Katumba Rao pioneered Telugu parallel cinema to international recognition. Gurish Kasaravalli, Gurish Karnad, and B. V. Karanth led the way for parallel cinema in the Kannada film industry. Many literary stalwarts entered or collaborated with cinema in this period. Some of the other notable filmmakers of this period were P. Lankesh, G. V. Iyer, M. S. Sathiyu who were later followed by T. S. Nagabharana, Baraguru Ramachandrapa, Shankar Nag, Chandrashikara Kambara in the 1980s. Actors like Lokesh, Anant Nag, L. V. Sharada, Vasudeva Rao, Suresh Heblakar, Vishali Kasaravalli, Arundhati Nag and others rose to fame. Babendra Nath Hoikia and Janu Barua did it for Assamese cinema, while Arabam Siam Sharma pioneered parallel movies in Manipuri cinema. Decline By the early 1990s, the rising costs involved in film production and the commercialization of the films had a negative impact on the art films. The fact that investment returns cannot be guaranteed made art films less popular amongst filmmakers. Underworld financing, political and economic turmoil, television, and piracy proved to be fatal threat to parallel cinema, as it declined. Other major reasons for decline One of the major reasons for the decline of the parallel cinema in India is that the FFC or the National Film Development Corporation of India did not seriously look into the distribution or exhibition of these films. The mainstream exhibition system did not pick up these films because these films did not have the so-called entertainment value that they were looking for. There was a talk of building small theatres for such film, but there was no serious attempt made to realise this alternative mode of exhibition. Thus, it left to a few film societies to screen these films, that too on a single screening basis. The advent of television and its popularity saw the film society movement decline. Gradually, the government reduced the patronage of such films, for they had only unseen films to be shown on their balance sheets. The parallel cinema in its true sense was always on the fringes of the mainstream cinema. Since most of the parallel cinema rejected the regressive worldview that was largely embodied the mainstream cinema they never found acceptance in the mainstream production, distribution and exhibition system. With an absence of an alternative exhibition system or an art house circuit as it is called in the West, many of the off-beat films made by present generation filmmakers like Sushant Mishra, Himanshu Katua, Ashish Avakunthak, Murali Nair, Amitabh Chakraborty, Paresh Kamdar, Priya Krishnaswamy, Vipin Vijay, Ramchandra P. N., Ashwini Malik, Anand Subramanian, Sanjavan Lal, Amit Dutta, Umesh Vinayak Kulkarni, Gurvinder Singh, Bela Negi have never had a large audience. Topic. Resurgence The term, ''parallel cinema'' has started being applied to off-beat films produced in Bollywood, where art films have begun experiencing a resurgence. This led to the emergence of a distinct genre known as Mumbai Noir, urban films reflecting social problems in the city of Mumbai. The introduction of Mumbai Noir was marked by Ram Gopal Varma's Satya 1998. However the Mumbai noir is a genre that is not considered artistic in ambition even though it concentrates on realistic portrayal of the Mumbai underworld, these are generally commercial films. Other modern examples of art films produced in India which are classified as part of the parallel cinema genre include Rituparno Ghosh's Utsab 2000 and Dayan 1997, Mani Ratnam's Yuva 2004, Nagesh Kakunor's Three Diwarain 2003 and Dor 2006, Manish Jha's Matrubhumi 2004, Sadir Mishra's Hazaran Kweshine Isi 2005, Janu Barua's Main Gandhi Ko Nahin Mara 2005, Pan Nalan's Valley of Flowers 
2006, Onir's My Brother, Nikhil 2005, and Ba Ek Pal 2006, Anurag Kashyap's Black Friday 2007, Vikramaditya Matwani's Udan 2009, Kiran Rao's Dobi Ghat 2010, Amit Dutta's Sankiti 2011, and the latest sensation Anand Gandhi's Ship of Theseus 2013. Independent films spoken in Indian English are also occasionally produced. Examples include Ravathi's Mitter, My Friend, 2002, Aparna Sen's Mr. and Mrs. Iyer, 2002, and 15 Park Avenue, 2006, Homi Adahania's Being Cyrus, 2006, Rituparno Ghosh's The Last Lear, 2007, and Sunni Tarapurvala's Little Zizo, 2009. Other Indian art film directors active today include Buddhadeb Dasgupta, Aparna Sen, Gautam Ghose, Sandeep Ray, Satyajit Ray's son, Kashik Ganguly, Suman Mukhopadhyay, and Kamaleshwar Mukherjee in Bengali cinema, Adore Gopalakrishnan, Shaji N. Karun, T. V. Chandran, M. P. Sukumaran Nair, Shyamaprasad, Sanal Kumar Sasidharan, and Dr. Biju in Malayalam cinema, Kumar Shahani, Keaton Mehta, Gavind Nihalani, Shyam Benegal, Amit Dutta, Manish Jha, Ashim Aluwalia, Anurag Kashyap, Anand Gandhi, and Deepa Mehta in Hindi cinema, Mani Ratnam and Bala in Tamil, Rajnesh Damalpali and Narasimha Nandi in Telugu cinema, Janu Barua in Hindi cinema and Assamese cinema, Amol Palekar and Yumesh Vinayak Kulkarni in Marathi cinema. Amir Khan, with his production studio, introduced his own brand of social cinema in the early 21st century, blurring the distinction between commercial masala films and realistic parallel cinema, combining the entertainment and production values of the former with the believable narratives and strong messages of the latter. He has helped introduce parallel cinema to mainstream audiences, with his films earning both commercial success and critical acclaim, in India and overseas. Topic global discourse During the formative period of Indian parallel cinema in the 1940s and 1950s, the movement was influenced by Italian cinema and French cinema, particularly by Italian neorealism as well as French poetic realism. Satyajit Ray particularly cited Italian filmmaker Vittorio de Sica's Bicycle Thieves and French filmmaker Jean Renoir's The River which he assisted, as influences on his debut film Pather Panchali alongside influences from Bengali literature and classical Indian theatre. Bimal Roy's Du Bigga Zaman was also influenced by de Sica's Bicycle Thieves. The Indian New Wave also began around the same time as the French New Wave and the Japanese New Wave. Ever since Chetan Anand's Nisha Nagar won the grand prize at the inaugural Cannes Film Festival in 1946, Indian parallel cinema films frequently appeared in international fora and film festivals for the next several decades. This allowed Indian independent filmmakers to reach a global audience. The most influential among them was Satyajit Ray, whose films became successful among European, American and Asian audiences. His work subsequently had a worldwide impact, with filmmakers such as Martin Scorsese, James Ivory, Abbas Kiarostami, Elia Kazan, Francois Truffaut, Carlos Sora, Isao Takahata and Wes Anderson being influenced by his cinematic style, and many others such as Akira Kurosawa praising his work. The youthful coming-of-age dramas that have flooded art houses since the mid-50s owe a tremendous debt to the Apu trilogy (1955–1959). Ray's film Kanchenjunga (1962) introduced a narrative structure that resembles later hyperlink cinema. Ray's 1967 script for a film to be called The Alien, which was eventually cancelled, is widely believed to have been the inspiration for Steven Spielberg's E.T. (1982). Ira Sachs' Forty Shades of Blue 2005 was a loose remake of Charolada, and in Gregory Nava's My Family 1995, the final scene is duplicated from the final scene of The World of Apu 1959. Similar references to Ray films are found in recent works such as Sacred Evil 2006, The Elements Trilogy of Deepa Mehta, and in films of Jean-Luc Godard. Another prominent filmmaker is Rinal Sen, whose films have been well known for their Marxist views. During his career, Rinal Sen's film have received awards from almost all major film festivals, including Cannes, Berlin, Venice, Moscow, Karlovy Vary, Montreal, Chicago, and Cairo. 
Retrospectives of his films have been shown in almost all major cities of the world. Another Bengali independent filmmaker, Ritwik Ghatak, began reaching a global audience long after his death. Beginning in the 1990s, a project to restore Ghatak's films was undertaken, and international exhibitions and subsequent DVD releases have belatedly generated an increasingly global audience. Alongside Ray's films, Ghatak's films have also appeared in several all time greatest film polls. A number of Satyajit Ray films appeared in the Sight and Sound Critics poll, including the Apu Trilogy ranked number 4 in 1992 if votes are combined, The Music Room ranked number 27 in 1992, Charalata ranked number 41 in 1992 and Days and Nights in the Forest ranked number 81 in 1982. The 2002 Sight and Sound Critics and Directors poll also included the Guru Dutt films Piazza and Kagas K. Fool, both tied at number 160, and the Ritwik Ghatak films Meg Daka Tara ranked number 231 and Komal Gandhar ranked number 346. In 1998, the critics poll conducted by the Asian film magazine Cinemaya included the Apu trilogy, ranked number one if votes are combined. Ray's Charalata and The Music Room, both tied at number 11, and Gothic Subarnarika also tied at number 11. In 1999, the Village Voice Top 250 Best Film of the Century critics poll also included the Apu trilogy, ranked number five if votes are combined. The Apu trilogy, Pyasa and Mani Ratnam's Nayakan were also included in Time magazine's All Time 100 Best Movies list in 2005. In 1992, the Sight and Sound Critics poll ranked Ray at number 7 in its list of top 10 directors of all time, while Dutt was ranked number 73 in the 2002 Sight and Sound Greatest Directors poll. The cinematographer Sabrata Mitra, who made his debut with Ray's The Apu trilogy, also had an important influence on cinematography across the world. One of his most important techniques was bounce lighting, to recreate the effect of daylight on sets. He pioneered the technique while filming Aparahito the second part of the Apu trilogy. Some of the experimental techniques which Satyajit Ray pioneered include photo-negative flashbacks and X-ray digressions while filming Pratidwandi Directors. <inaudible> 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 See also Soviet parallel cinema Italian neorealism Cinema Novo Cinema of the world Cinema of India Cinema of West Bengal Masala film genre National Film Award for Best Feature Film New Generation Malayalam Film Movement